Greetings fellow Bannermen, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Mount and Blade 2 Bannerlord, Lords of the Forest. Episode 20, Sargot Spectator. The other thing I ought to be doing is checking in on the, um, the people that are in the taverns to check if they meet our criteria. Uh, just to remind you all, we're only recruiting like good people, meaning that they have nice traits. They're not cruel. They're not close fisted. Um, those kind of traits. So we have space for one more companion. And then once we level up another clan here, we'll have space for two more companions. Hey! So it'd be good for me to constantly check for better companions. Rattling sleep deprivation? Uh, no, surprisingly. I was just up real late last night doing completely not appropriate things for a father to be doing. <laughs> Playing video games and chatting until the wee hours of the morning for a lack of sleep. Self-inflicted. I think, is this a Noble Mount? Yeah, so this Noble Mount will be worth a hell of a lot of money if I win it. Which is good. Damn, she swings real fast. Oh, I got her. Nice. I think her swing speed was faster than mine, so it was hard to, like, land hits. Cossian, worth 15 grand. Yeah, uh, sold. I don't even care how strong it is as a mount. That's a lot of money. <laughs> that mount pays for the wages of my troops for, um, almost a month. In terms of troops XP, no stack is ready to go, but I think what I'm going to do is level them up anyway. Because going into a big fight, I'm going to want them to be as strong as possible. So waiting for the whole stack is probably ill-advised as they're not likely to serve, you know. Uh... Oh, uh, Sargot's already being besieged. That actually could work to my benefit here. Because if uh, Batanian leaders fail... I can then swoop in and clean up the surviving defenders. So as much as I want to go beat up Leothold's army, it might be worth my time to hang out to see if Batania loses here. Because if they lose, I can get Sargot for cheap. Big old discount. So I'm just going to sit here and camp and watch. And pray that the defenders win. What is the symbol above bandit names? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to see the symbol. I doesn't ring a bell. Unless it's like, so these symbols? Oh, okay. Of course, the symbols doesn't appear. Would be like moving speed and what type they are. Who are you? Oh, Legata's Rebels. Wait, Legata's also? Well, oh, uh... Where is Legata? It, it's... Oh, uh, here it is. Oh, weird. So, Legata fell to Valandian rule. Wow, Valandia's really going west, or east. Very surprising. Valandian normally stops at, like... Thraktatori Castle or Usankt or whatever, and they've gotten Legata and Gersegos. So they're really uh, taking big chunks of uh, the Empire. Um, they're making really strong inroads there. So I have uh, 60 days of food and um, 
my passive income is higher than my troop pay. So yeah, I can just sit here and watch. It really is fine. I wonder how much more food that Prindor's army has. Oh, uh, Turtle has uh, aged up. So at his 14th birthday, you gave Turtle a special present. You have seen him treasure it and believe it will shape who he is. You gave him a... So this is what, four choices? Or six choices? Um, so currently, I believe we were trying to make him our engineer. If memory serves, is that true? No. Uh, tank? Rider? He has really high riding skill and really high endurance with decent control. Yeah, no, he has no intelligence. So I think he was just going to be a combatant, like a, a fighter. So the option number one is a sword, which gives vigor and a, a one-handed. A steed gives more riding and higher endurance, endurance of six, which is very high. Um, a teacher on siegecraft gives siege and intelligence. A finely crafted game board gives cunning and tactics. A bow gives control and bow skills. And a trip to your realm's court gives uh, charm and social. So, yeah. It's too bad these aren't these options aren't ordered in. Um, and I, I know the the polls over it a little bit, but it's too bad the options aren't top down. So like option number one would be vigor, option number two would be control, option number three would be endurance. That way, like you know, they weren't mixing and matching, crossing over, like a multi multiple choice answer. Dear Lord, that sword is like as big as he is. See what you guys think. I'm going to have it be a shorter, shorter timer here. But that would make sense. Yeah, it would make sense. It would be far easier to follow. Rather than one, three, six, four, two, five. It could just go one, two, three, four, five, six. But, you know, whatever. Uh, what do I know? Uh, so it looks like uh, I'm going to call it early. It looks like a bow. Oh, he's aiming it straight at us. Man, we didn't teach him very much. All right. Uh, next one. In his adolescence, he began, uh, he began to take on serious responsibilities. So uh, he could go for sword skill. Uh, riding skill. Uh, that's weird. Crafting a weapon gives engineering skill, not smithing. Bow. Okay. Uh, healing skill. Bow again. Or trade. So I think likely the winners here would be sword or bow, which would be one or five. You guys uh, seem to want to turn him into a Fion champion, which I'm all for. However you want to make him, as long as it's, you know, not terrible. A ballista is a really big weapon for engineering, right? Yeah, I guess he crafted it a ballista for his, uh, you know, adolescent responsibilities. If I crafted a trebuchet or ballista as an adolescent, I don't think anyone would call me responsible, though. I think there would be some serious questions about what the hell uh, my parents were allowing me to do. Outside of events also intruded on his adolescence. And uh, he leveled up a little bit in charm and leadership. Nice. Very strong choices there. Come on, Sargot. Hold out. Defeat the attackers. Who leveled up? Oh, that was weird. I had a character pop-up thing. Like, there was someone that leveled up and then it disappeared as soon as I looked. You got me! This is taking a long time. I, th I still think it's worth just, like, watching. Because in the case that, that, um, Batania fails, 
and the defenders succeed, the defenders might be weakened enough that I can swoop in for the victory, like, at very low cost. I am also very... You know what? I, I can't. I can't. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go attack Leothold, because I'm just... I just have to. They're gonna be a while over there, so at least this gives me another battle. Come here, Leo. Stop there. No, I'm not gonna stop. Yield or fight. Did my locks disappear? I'll just have to be careful of that. Okay. Uh, deploy. Archers. Let's deploy out in the uh, on the open. And I'm going to give them loose formation because we just made loose formation stronger. Uh, Warriors will be in front in shield wall. And then horse bowmen are fine. I'll just put them up there. Mountain archers! Stay close! Soldiers! Soldiers! Move out! Bowmen! Alright, I don't think that they're going to commit to the attack. That'd be my guess. So, I'm probably going to position my troops over here. So that they don't have such a hill height advantage. See if I can't antagonize them into charging me. Well, I hit something. Hit a horse's leg. Oh, hit something else. They don't seem to care, though. Bulk of their troops are going to be cresting the hill soon, so they'll have a shot on me, so i got to be careful. It does look like our troops are nearly in position, which is good. Yeah, come on, you want to fight me, don't you? I'm such a juicy, tasty target. Ouch. And you know, apparently ill-prepared to actually defend myself. Ah, there you go. I like your helmet. Hope I win it when I kill you. That's probably their leader? Because I don't... No, that's just a banner knight. Okay. He just looks different. Get back here. Oh wow, they rushed my um, archers. All of you hell. If they pulled out of the forest, I'm telling my troops to charge. They seem to be in a bit of a fleeing thing going on right now. Wow, my charger is charging. I just did a lot of damage actually just mowing them over like this. Donk. Here comes the volley of arrows. Good luck surviving that, Banner Knights. Yep, you didn't. I didn't think you would. Time to disrupt the crossbowmen. Because if the crossbowmen are getting trampled by me, they're not shooting my own troops. Oh, I leveled up. Nice. I also should be at uh, 629 Renown, so at the end of this fight I'll see the Renown gain. Which is yet another reason why I jumped to the opportunity, even though I'm going to have to probably replenish some of the troops that die. Uh, 
ultimately, I think our troops are going to level up more than they die, and I'll gain renown, which is the ultimate goal of becoming clan tier 4. I know you get to kill some Blandians, which, you know, never going to complain about that. Is that it? I don't see anyone else. My troops are running this way. No, that's it. Wow, we didn't take a lot of losses. Eleven. And you are free to go, too. Level up my leadership and charm doing that. I'll take the prisoners. Uh, ooh. Wow. It's legendary, so it's a tier lower than my current armor, and it's stronger significantly. I like it. I'm going to lock in the old one, though. Uh, I'm obviously going to take everything, but... Uh, yeah, the locks are gone for the horses. They just disappeared. Uh, and the food, so I'm going to have to be really careful about selling stuff, uh, obviously. About donating. But uh, yeah, that worked out quite well. Quite well indeed. And then my current renown is 657. All right, I'm heading over to Jacqueline just to uh, to sell some stuff and uh, enter the arena fight if I can. Uh, but let's go ahead and yeah, none of these weapons I want to keep. The U bow does I can't use while riding, so I'm gonna ditch. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna ditch it as well. Uh, as far as the armor goes, uh, I'm gonna try to donate it this time and not screw it up and donate things that I don't want to. And then the banner of the horseman, I'll sell as well. So the next year is at 900. So I'm working towards 900 and I'm at, what did I just say, 657? And I started the stream at 600. I hate using a really long two-hander in an infantry fight. It's so unwieldy. Break your shield. You keep blocking, it's gonna break. Ouch. Oh, that was interesting. One knocked the other out, and I knocked out the remainder like at the same time. Aim up. There we go. Get back here. Actually, yeah, you want to use swords? That's fine. Suits me better. I'm a duelista. Alright. Final round. Me versus just a sharpshooter. Shouldn't be too hard. Okay, done. 
Nine more renown. And, oh, wow, that's a tier six helmet. Uh, I guess I'll lock that in too. Wow, it's worth 18,000. Uh, and Korok already has one. So Sigatruda, you are inheriting big time. In fact, Sigatruda, I'm also gonna give you the... Who benefits from it more? So that is down one, up eight, up six. Down one, up eight, up six. So uh, they were wearing the same armor. Okay, I'll give it to Korok. So big improvements to um, uh, to follower gear. And I'll lock in the old helmets that they had on uh, because they're probably good hand-me-downs. Dormant, you're impulsive and devious, so not gonna be one of my teammates. But we're going to get rid of the prisoners. And then uh, head back to Batanian culture to recruit a few more troops to fill it up. So, filter to armor. Discard. And check that I still have horses and food. And I do. Cool. So, didn't screw it up this time. Uh, as far as party goes... I'm going to level one up, level everyone up again, even if it isn't full stack. And we're starting to get our first uh, Fion champions, which is awesome. So, uh, here we have, mm, where'd they go? Nine of them. That will be very helpful. When it comes to battle. I guess before I go recruiting, I'm going to swing by Sargot to make sure that the siege isn't almost already over. Oh no, it's still going. Prindor's party looks fine. As long as they have food. I mean, I don't know what kind of food they have, but I'm assuming they're well supplied. I'm actually going to make an effort to recruit more non-archers because um, the um, the archer to melee ratio is kind of off for our party a little bit. There we go. So now I'm supplied, and I'm just going to be hanging out around Sargot looking for rebels to kill or um, jumping in on the uh, the siege if I can. Oh yeah, the siege is going in full. They're, they're in full scale now. I don't think Sargot's going to succeed though. The rebels look like they're losing faster than the attackers. But I'll watch. And if you're wondering, like, I can't join. I don't belong. Oh, no, I can. Yeah, I don't want to help out Batania, though. I kind of want them to lose. But not enough to, like, backstab them and make them lose. So that wouldn't really help me in the long run. Yeah, they're down to only 100 defenders. They're Dunskis. Oh, well. No one's in the tavern. Now, I am sort of curious. Yeah, right after the... um. I, so here's something that's interesting. Right after they got conquered, one of the advantages of hanging out here is... um. They don't have any food in Sargot, like, at all. So I can dump all of my food, just about, at really, really, really high value, leaving my, myself with, like, eight days of food, because it's going to be big for trade. So there we go. Gained a little bit of trade skill just selling food, because Sargot was essentially sieged and starved to death. Um, so 
Although I didn't get Sargot, I uh, profited from it. Uh, I also got a free focus point, but I'm going to spend this in uh, stewardship uh, rather than pull for it because I need stewardship for a larger army. Yeah, I am a war profiteer, I know. Uh, so I do have a question for you. Again, the same question. Uh, how to primarily gain renown. And I added another one there, which is to fight rebels. Um, there doesn't seem to be any rebels at the moment, though. So, like, maybe don't vote for that. <laughs> I thought that Vostrum was still um, under rebel control, but it isn't. So, ha! Gotcha! Now, the other thing I'm going to have as a problem is I have all these uh, troops now. And, well, actually, let's not level them up. The, the problem is, of course, I'm paying for them. Uh, I still have positive income per day, but my party wages have uh, almost quadrupled from having higher level. Um, so, yeah. But every single silversmith is making money, technically. I mean, one's making 18 silver, so not much money, but still technically, yes. Uh, my trade currently is at... 104, pretty close to 105. And let's continue looking for trade opportunities. Uh, Sargot just got pillaged, so I don't think they're going to have anything for sale. But let's uh, maybe buy olives from Mott and Aramak and Vesin and see where we can hawk it. So this is at 10 price. Oh, the other thing is, we're going to be... Because I didn't end up buying more food. Uh, I need to buy food in general, because uh, we're going to be eating those olives like crazy. Because I just sold all my food to Sargon, so... Heading into... Tra wow, that's a huge daily change. 1300 I made a lot of money. Uh, olives at 13 No, I don't want olives. So let's uh, go ahead and buy just regular food, just to keep our, our party fed. There's no arena fights here, and I'm just going to keep buying olives uh, from Vezin Usonk, and this probably sell it to Sargat because Sargat uh, still has massive food shortages, and they'll buy olives very expensively. Uh, fighting rebels or trade? Okay. So if there's rebel fights to be had, uh, that's what I'll prioritize. And if there isn't, I will just look to... Um, I'll look to trade to get my trade up to 125 so that I can have passive uh, renown income or renown gain. Uh, Roos, thank you for the sub. Welcome to the stream. Okay, all of the 16, those are more expensive than what I paid for. So now over to Sargot. If they still buy olives, yeah, they're they're buying it at fifty four a pop. So I bought it at fourteen, selling at fifty four. That would be nice, nice profit. Look at all the caravans. So all of the caravans are flooding into Sargot because Sargot has extreme shortages that all the traders are trying to take advantage of. Uh. So I actually can't sell too many olives until they're not, they don't care about the sell price. So my trade skill is 662 from leveling. Um, yeah, so Sargot just got like massively oversupplied. So I'm going to head to Carbanth or Banseth to try to sell the rest of these. <laughs> yeah, the car caravans are hitting up Sargot, like, oh man, like Black Friday.
And I'll stop over at Dunglanis. There's a arena fight. Let's see if there's anything worth buying. Oh, they have very cheap grain. Although the profit margins in grain are pretty bad. Uh, so grain, generally speaking, isn't great to buy due to the low profit margins. I have a history of buying tools and then like not being able to sell them for a good price. And very likely that will remain to be true, but I'm going to buy them anyway, because they are cheap. What are we fighting for? Ooh, a noble mount. Okay, I really want to win this because noble mounts are worth a bajillion. It's sort of funny that the Sword Sisters aren't, like, given armor, so when they run at you, they're, like, look nothing, like, they're equipped with nothing more than, like, peasant garb. It's so, like, if you're Sword Sisters, I don't know, at least have some metal on you, like everyone else does. Steph, thank you for the resub as well. Clothing. I mean, I don't think it is good for battle, but it looked pretty cool until he fell over with it. I barely got hit there. That round. Is the Batanian. No, unfortunately. I have a Cossian. It's a tier six. So yeah, this, uh, maybe I'll give to a, no, no one has enough writing skill even for it. Oh no, GMT does, but GMT has a Cossian as well. So I'm going to sell it nine. Oh no, don't discard it. <laughs> I'll, I'm glad there's like an alert button of like, Hey, you're about to throw out a, a, a 9k horse. You sure about this? No, I'm not sure. <laughs> I take it back. I take it back. Right. Is Carbans this still the best place for olives? Rumor says yes. Yeah, that's a that's a little bit of a profit, not much. Uh, cheap cheese. I don't think by the time I get to to Sargot. The, the the price of this cheese will actually be worth selling, so I'm not going to do it. And 1K sub hype. That's quite a name. Thank you for the sub. May I ask what your name means or why you have that name? All right. Looks like we're trading some pottery. Oh, silver ore. Um, I'll just leave it here because this is where our workshop works. So they'll just the workshop will buy it. And then these are jewelry that our workshop is putting into the market. So I, buying it doesn't make much sense. Um. Do I want to move hogs around? I don't, but like they're cheap here, so I'm going to do it anyway. So the first thing I want to do is sell these hogs because moving around animals sucks. Oh, and there's no trade rumors? For real? For, for real. Mm, okay, I'll just try to find a good place for them then. Maybe down to Sargot. I bet they don't have hogs. Trade caravans generally don't buy... Well, I, I don't know if that's true. I haven't seen a lot of trade caravans trade in animals, but maybe they do. 
My two-handed skill leveled up enough, so I can choose either between Berserker, which is um, 20% damage with two hand when I am wounded. And I'm not going to do the governor because I'm never going to be a governor of anything. So I can ignore the governor bonus. And then the other one is also a governor bonus. So it's 15% uh, damage with two hand when almost full health or full health. I did not type that out well, but whatever, you understand. Do I do more damage when I'm wounded or do more damage when I'm healthy? So it's 50% or less or 90% and up, essentially. And I'm also leveling up in stewardship pretty good because I have a, such a large army. So that's one of the benefits of having a large army. I mean, it sucks to have to pay for them, but the bonus of leveling up. Kind of nice. So Ostakin wants to buy this pottery. Got it. Trade is now at 105. All right, Ostakin, I am on your... Where is it again? Oh, that's a... Uh, that, yeah, that... Yeah. I remember. For some reason or another, I thought it was um, Empire territory, but it's uh, the landy in Northwest. And I'm checking for rebels. I don't see any rebellions active right now. Is this really? What's uh, oh oh f uh, family? Never mind. No active rebellions, so there's no place for me to fight rebels. You are close fisted. So that's a nope. I have not been very good at checking um, taverns. I need to make a point of doing more of that. Yep, yeah, I can sell all that pot pottery at a profit. And Ostakin, what do you have for me? Oh, you have silver ore. That's pretty inexpensive silver ore. Thank you for the bits. Uh, Sargot just had a pop-up talking about rebels, so they're probably going to have a rebellion soon. Good to know. Trade is now 106, and you guys want me to take the Berserker. Yeah, I'm usually pretty wounded, so, like, I get that. <laughs> I, I agree. Uh, there is a arena fight here. Male mittens. Sounds like they're talking about a cat. Oh, this is my male cat named Mittens. Ah, oh, I really hate Valanian battles. I don't enjoy the like the slap fights that like it's cool if we lance and everyone has like high momentum and it's like people get knocked out in one hit. But these battles almost always turn out. Oh well, no, he got lanced. But they often turn out to like a slap fight with like underpowered swords at point blank on horseback like this because the opponents choose not to fight with lancing because they're not like coded to do it like it's some sort of a knight's tale type fight so the fights here are always kind of boring because they become slap fights all oh, just missed his head My pro crossbow skill is pretty dismal. Uh-oh. Our melee is uh, not doing well. Yeah! 
I'm coming to get you. What's my favorite culture to fight in the arenas? Uh, Sturgia, probably. Sturgian fights are brutal and quick. With very low use of shields and melts. It's like javelins and two-handers. Whereas the Empire... The Empire and Valandia tend to use a lot of mounts and, like, shields, so that they're prolonged and boring. And then, I, I really don't like Kuzate either, because, like, horse archers... Sometimes, if, you're, if you have high skills in horse archery, or in riding and archery, you can shut down those arena fights quickly, but if you don't have both... You end up just, like, firing arrows everywhere, not hitting anything, and it, it's equally pretty frustrating as a result. Um, do we want to trade in saddle horses? Maybe. I'm going to buy saddle horses up to... Ooh, all of them? I'm going to buy all the saddle horses. It's going to be really brutal to move around, but I'm going to do it anyway. And then I'm going to go in the warehouse and donate the silver here uh, instead of selling it. Thank you for tuning in to Mount and Blade 2 Bannerlord Lords of the Forest, which originally streamed live on Twitch April 30th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, Rodamont.com has a link to it, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch a next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow Batanians. <laughs>